Hey guys, it's Busy Sims, and we are back with more Paradigm Paradox, continuing Yukonami's route, and I think where we were in the last part, Yukonami attacked the Vector and we were mad at him. I'm assuming, because we're saying he's not around these flowers either, so... Because, like, the Vector stepped on the flowers and, like, we had the argument with him. Anyway. He's not around these flowers, either. A few days had passed since Yukonami and I fought. I was looking for him in the places I thought he'd be. He's avoiding me for sure. Yukonami, I hope you're not planning to do something foolish. The expression on his face, it was clear he'd been deeply wounded somehow. I couldn't just leave him be. Yukonami said he likes it when I smile. I want to see him smile, too. When I thought about his clumsy attempts at kindness, my heart started to hurt. What could, I, what could I have done differently? Yukonami, where are you? After I lost sight of Yukonami that day, I went straight to Lizzie for advice. I'm back! I peeked into the room and saw Lizzie resting in bed. Oh, welcome back. You look like you're in a tizzy. What's up? Have you seen Yukonami? Not recently, but... Uh... Have you decided we're gonna bounce now? Uh, no. I want to cancel that plan, even though I know it's selfish to do so. Uh, cancel it? Okay. If you see we're no longer planning to run off, that's fine. I intended to tell Lizzie everything that had happened, but I had something more important to deal with. I'm looking for you, Konami. I need to find him right away, and then... Alright, just calm down and tell me what happened. Well, we were... I explained everything that had happened over the past few days as succinctly as I could. Meeting the professor, learning about Yukonami's past, our flower walks, and about how we just started to bond. Lizzie listened closely to my stuttering, half-panicked roundup of the, of the recent events. Hmm, I see. Yukonami did seem much gentler lately. I guess it wasn't my imagination. I thought Yukonami and I were forming a bond. I was hoping I could get through to him, but it didn't work out. I felt utterly helpless, but Lizzie patted my head reassuringly. You did good. Lizzie? I was afraid of Yukonami until recently, but I've started to think it might be possible to get through to him. He and you can get through to him. You just need to try again. But I think I might have hurt his feelings. I've been looking everywhere for him, but I think he's probably hiding from me. I felt weak and hopeless. I wouldn't blame him for hating me, really. Even if I find him, I doubt he wants to see me. You think so? Well, I don't. I looked at Lizzie, and she gave me a gentle smile in return. Think of everything you shared with Yukonami. All those feelings you built up together. Is that kind of stuff so easily tossed aside? Lizzie looked toward the window where a bunch of flowers and an old glass bottle sat on the ledge. Those flowers. They're the ones you and Yukonami brought back, right? If you do something like that, he's not all bad. Not all bad. Lizzie's words resonated with me deeply. I thought back. Right, I should have realized as much during the past few days we spent together. My nerves and paranoia caused me to miss the bigger picture, but Lizzie had talked me back around to some sembl had talked me back around to some semblance of rational thought. If I see him and talk to him, I'm sure we can work this all out. Yukonami's learned so many things. He's no longer the person he once was. Lizzie pat me on the back encouragingly when she saw the fire return to my eyes. And Lizzie's cheering me on, too. I can't just sit here and mope around. I have to go out and find Yukonami. But where do I even find him? I've looked everywhere I can think of. It wouldn't do any good to look around Tao in the dark. I'd break a leg. And there was a chance Yukonami had completely left the colony. I'm not sure I can find him by myself. Then I recalled something important. If you need help, come see me any time. I don't remember his voice quite well, but that's all right. Right, the professor! I can go ask him! Destination set, I dashed off. The lights were on at the professor's house, so I knocked on the door and called out softly. Hello? Professor? Are you home? Ah, uh, it's you again. Hello. 
He beckoned me inside, but I politely refused since I wouldn't be there long. I told him why I was there. I just came over to ask you something. Has Yukinami come by? I went looking in places I thought he might be, but I can't find him anywhere. I explained to the professor why I was look why I was looking for Yukinami. When I mentioned how we'd spent time gathering flowers, the professor seemed pleased. So I thought I should come to you to ask for advice on where I should look. I see. Well, he hasn't been by here. I think he knows I used to be a researcher. The professor looked a little sad. That's right. Yukinami was abused daily back at the lab. Start for attention, Yukinami had constantly acted out. That's what the professor told me. He even craved attention from the people who treated him so badly. He must have been terribly lonely. I don't believe the professor was one of them, but it's no wonder Yukinami hates researchers. I'm sorry I couldn't help more, but Moravia should have an idea of where he is. Hearing the professor bring up Moravia made me feel a spark of hope. Moravia? Ow, bird! Moravia's been with Yukinami the longest. She would know where he likes to hide. Yeah, they've been together since they lived in that lab, right? I'm gonna look for Moravia. Thanks, Professor. The Professor gave me a warm smile as he saw me off at the door. So, she's gone. And to look for Yukinami, no less. She really acclimated better to this place than expected, hasn't she? She was raised to be kind, so she doesn't discriminate about who deserves kindness, be they human or vector. Kind, eh? Let's hope it doesn't wind up backfiring. Ooh! I went in search of Moravia, ignorant about the conversation back at the house. Where could she be? I knew I needed to find Moravia, but when I thought about it, I realized I didn't know her much better than I knew Yukonami. She was pretty mysterious, always showing up when I least expected to see her. Now that I needed her, I had no idea how to find her. What does Moravia spend her time doing anyway? And where? She's so mysterious, I can't imagine her doing normal stuff. I can't find Yukonami if I don't find Moravia, but finding her is going to be a hunt in and of itself. I desperately looked around, calling out her name at random intervals. Moravia, where are you? I'm right here. I heard the sound of someone landing behind me, and I turned around in surprise. Moravia, you're here, but uh, where have you been? Up in that tree. And looked up. Sure enough, there was a tree with boughs wide enough to sit on. How long was she up there? Has she been watching me, or do I just have good timing? Then I remembered I was here for Yukonami, not me. Moravia, I need you to help me look for Yukonami. For Yukonami? Why? Apparently, Moravia hadn't heard anything about what happened between us. I thought Yukonami and I had started to bond, but we wound up having an argument, and I wasn't able to get through to him. The last time I saw him, he looked really hurt. I'm so worried about him. I don't want to just leave things as they are. Worried, huh? You're working hard to understand, Yukonami, aren't you? Moravia smiled softly at me. She was pleased. In that case, I'll help you out. I can hazard a guess at what Yukonami's up to. Really? Thank you. Moravia beckoned to me and started walking a few steps ahead. Come on. Moravia guided me out of Tau. You Yukonami's all the way out here? Not here, no. He's probably gone off to attack humans. What? I was shocked. Moravia's suggestion was terrible, but her voice was perfectly casual. Whenever he gets stressed out or angry, he hassles some humans to blow off steam. His destination is always Theta. That meant Yukonami could be attacking humans even as we spoke. No, oh, I needed to get to him as fast as possible. I have to stop him. I can't let him do that. I can't. You want to protect the humans? Yes, but it's not just about the humans. It's about Yukonami, too. I didn't have time to explain. I just started running. How much of a head start did Yukonami get? I'm probably way too late to catch up with him now. But I needed to try to get to him before he could attack anyone. I wondered why I was so determined to stop him, but the answer came to me immediately. I think... I have feelings for... I ran at full bore, scanning the horizon. I then realized footsteps were approaching me from behind. 
Hey, you left me behind as soon as I gave you a hint. That's not very nice. I shot a sideways glance at Moravia, but didn't slow down. Sorry, but you attack humans too, right? I knew firsthand that Moravia wasn't the type to hold off on attacking humans. I was surprised she'd even join me to stop Yukonami. I don't want you to attack humans either. I'll decide what I do for myself. But if you need help stopping Yukonami, I'm here for it. Her offer was welcome, but first I needed to figure out if she was genuine. Why would you help me, though? You seem to really want to stop him. That's why I don't mind helping out. Is that not good enough for you? I really have no idea how Moravia's mind works, but I'm not about to refuse her aid. Okay, thank you! <laughs> don't mention it. Moravia and I sped off towards Theta, side by side. We ran for a long time, but I was too anxious and nervous to feel tired. We drew closer to Theta, but there was still no sign of Yukonami. We've almost reached Theta. Yukonami might already be there, hurting someone right now. That's when the sound of fighting drifting tor drifted toward us. Oh no. Is Yukonami attacking some field researchers like last time? He's probably attacking buildings. The sound's coming from over there. Let's hurry! My imagination cooked up a horrid scene as we dashed toward the source of the noise. He's not attacking humans, he's releasing his frustration on buildings. Because that would show that he grew and changed a little. Yukonami came into view moments later, along with several other people. Oh. Oh no. That's all of the blooms? Oh! When I saw Kaori, I was like, no! I was really hoping we don't have to see our old friends. I was, like, thinking of that in my head when it's like, we're running toward Theta. I'm like, I don't want to run into our old friends. It's going to make me feel bad. My old allies were fighting against Yukonami. I gasped with the sight of their familiar faces. I never thought I'd encounter the blooms outside of Theta. For a moment, I was frozen with shock. That's when they noticed me. Oh. Hey! Sneezy! What are you doing here? Where have you been all this time? Huh. We were worried, you know. Uh, sorry. I had no idea how I was supposed to explain everything, especially with everyone staring holes into me. In order to explain why I'd vanished, I need to explain what happened to Lizzie. And to explain that, I'd have to explain how vectors used to be human. What do I do? It's all way too complicated to lay out here and now. I would just say it. I looked around, and my gaze locked onto Yukonami. He seemed badly wounded, as if he'd been thoroughly kicked around. Y Yukonami? I couldn't believe my eyes. It was hard to believe someone with Yukonami's abilities could be beaten up so badly. Why? I mumbled without thinking, and Kaori frowned. This one apparently doesn't like fighting back. What? Not at all? That's when I realized that despite Yukonami's heavy wounds, none of the blooms had a scratch on them. Not sure what his deal is, but if it but it works for us, now we can take him out. Wait, you can't. It's Macy behind you. I whirled around, but it was just Moravia standing behind me. I get away from her. Haruka immediately dropped into a fighting stance, prepared to battle with Moravia. Attack Haruka directly. Deflect Haruka's attack. Protect Moravia. I feel like we should not attack attack Haruka directly. I don't want to do that. I don't. Deflect the attack or protect Moravia, I feel like are similar. I will take either one of those. Okay. Doot, doot, doot. Our third save file. Okay. And the answer is... Dun, dun, dun. Deflect or attack. Okay. Ooh, I feel like attack is a bad ending. Haruka, don't! I levitated a chunk of debris and used it to block Haruka's flame attack. Hey! Why are you getting in the way? I'm sorry, but please, don't attack. I hated not being able to explain myself right away. The girl's eyes grew cold with distrust. Do you plan to defend her? Our enemy? Now everyone was glaring at me. This isn't good. Honestly, who could blame them for thinking I'd 
I defected to the Vector's side. There was no doubt that the way I disappeared from Theta was suspicious. I'd caused a lot of trouble, and I felt guilty about all of it. Still, their distrust made me panic. Be that as it may, I can't go back now. Sorry, everyone, but please believe me when I say I have no intention of being an enemy of humans. I swear, I don't want to fight. Wait, are you... Kaori was the first to let a cooler head prevail, though her, eye though her eyes still burned with anger. Are you seriously taking a Vector's side? You say you don't want to harm humans, but that's pretty hard to believe when you're risking your life to protect her. Kaori and Haruka were right to doubt me. I was sure I'd feel the same way if I was in their position. This isn't going well. Speak to Moravia. Run toward Yukonami. I feel like we should both, we're supposed to run toward Yukonami because it's his route. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yukonami! I dashed to Yukonami and reached down for him. Are you alright? Can you move? Of course I'm alright! Don't treat me like a kid! Despite his tough act, Yukonami was clearly in great pain. I tried to keep my voice light. Come on. Let's run away together! Yukonami took my hand and hauled himself to his feet. Okay! Of course, the Blooms weren't about to let us away that easily. Let us get away that easily. They all leapt into action, clearly intending to block our path. That's when Moravia slipped between us. A go. I'll buy you some time. I was surprised to hear Moravia's plan. It wasn't a small task for one person to fight four of the Blooms. Moravia, but... You think I'd let these girls beat me? Moravia's jaw was set with steely determination. She clearly had no lack of confidence in her skills. All right, please take care of them. I had faith in Moravia's strength. I, I knew I could leave the blooms to her while Yukonami and I escaped the battlefield. Well then, shall we begin? I heard the two sides clash behind me. The only time Moravia has ever actually fought, she usually just stands there. Interesting. I looked back from a distance and saw Moravia use her psychokinesis to lift chunks of debris from all around her. She was using them as projectiles. Her plan was to slow the blooms down, not to kill them. Is she really holding back from doing serious damage out of respect for my wishes? I didn't understand her motivation, but I was glad to know she wouldn't hurt the blooms too badly. You could not mean lo uh... Lo lopped? Loped? Lopped more than he ran, thanks to his wounds. Like, I hurried him along as best I could, despite the distraction behind us. I just need to get us to a safe place, and fast. Somewhere well out of the Bloom's sight. I'm sorry. Yukonami puffed and panted out his apology as he stumbled along, dragging his feet. I can't run so fast. You, go on ahead. Without you? There's no point in that. If you have enough energy to waste on saying silly things, then you have enough to run faster. Huh? You know, you... You're kind of a demon sometimes. I am not a demon. Uh, at least I don't think I am. We shouldn't have been wasting time on chit-chat, but somehow it made me feel better. It seemed to soothe Yukonami, too. He even smiled a bit as we spoke. I think this should be far enough. We'd finally reached an area far from Theta and the fighting. We could no longer hear the sounds of battle. <sighs> and this is the first time I've ever gotten tired while running. It's kind of shocking, to be honest. What do you expect? You're wounded. I looked around and spotted a crumbling building that had low walls for us to sit on and rest. Yukonami, over here. You're badly hurt. I'm sure you're tired. Just sit for a minute. Whatever. I'm fine. You're not fine. You're a complete mess. Be a good patient and do what you're told. Man, this is kind of new, isn't it? Since when were you so pushy? Rumbling, Yukonami sat down as directed. He was almost completely drained of strength. I looked him over again. His injuries were bad. Certainly bad enough to kill a normal human. Anger toward the blooms began to well up in me, but I shook my head to clear my thoughts. No, I don't have time to waste thinking about right versus wrong right now. Yukonami, are you okay? Does it hurt? I told you I'm fine. I'm made of tough stuff. Yeah, but there's no way that doesn't hurt. 
It made me feel awful to see Yukonami put on such a brave face. Given his condition, it made him look a bit pitiful. It's okay to admit you're in pain, Yukonami. I gazed at him, my voice soft. I didn't want him to act like it was nothing. You think this hurts me? It would sure hurt me if I was in your place. Yukonami examined his arms and body. They were badly scratched up. I don't know. Is this what pain is supposed to be? I wasn't sure. He really doesn't understand what pain is? He's not just acting tough? My heart sank a little further. Not only was Yukonami oblivious to the pain of others, but his own pain as well. This is too much. His upbringing in that lab, it's too terrible to think about. A place where his pain was irrelevant? I couldn't even imagine what it was like, but my very soul hurt for Yukonami. I wanted to find out the source of his pain since he couldn't even really understand it himself. Yukonami, why didn't you dodge when the others attacked you back there? Yukonami looked up at me, his face contorting as if he was about to cry. His eyes are all watery. Oh, look at the little sad CG. Hey, Speezy. His voice turned soft and started to quiver. I need to turn my back on violence if I want people to love me, right? That's what I'd said to him before he disappeared. Did, did he take my words literally? Is that why he let himself get beaten? Horrified, I covered my mouth. Even if the other person gets you really mad, you can't use violence, right? You said if I don't follow that rule, nobody will love me. So I didn't hurt them, no once. But even though I, I did as you said... His voice was so sad, I wanted to cry. He wanted to see if I was right, so he went out there and refused to fight back, no matter how badly they hurt him. I'd done a bad job explaining things to him. I never thought he'd take me so literally... Not to the point that he'd refused to defend himself. But he tried to do exactly that, and this was the result. I was overwhelmed with sympathy and guilt. He was so childlike, so innocent. I'm sorry, that must have hurt. I say, I'd say I'm sorry, like to apologize because it's our fault. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Yukonami. I didn't do a good job explaining exactly what I meant. I took his hand as I apologized, not caring about the blood that smeared on me. Speezy, why are you apologizing? I mean, you got hurt so badly because of the things I told you. You let them hurt you without fighting back. No, you're wrong. None of this is your fault. I only did it because I wanted you. I want to know, do you love me? He gazed right at me, his large eyes brimming with emotion. Yukonami really is innocent. Despite being raised in horrible circumstances, he'd never lost his pure heart. That was the most precious thing about him. Wanting to protect his, his innocence, I told him the honest truth. Yes, I love you. Yukonami's eyes widened. A smile dawned over his battered face. <laughs> his all battered bruise, but happy. Oh, cool. As long as you love me, it was all worth it then. The innocence of his smile warmed my heart. I'll always love you, Yukonami. This is a very awkward romance, but okay. It seems you two found a way to pass the time. Yukonami and I stopped grinning at each other long enough to whirl around at the voice behind us. It was Moravia without a single scratch. Moravia! Oh, I'm so glad you're all right. Pfft, that was barely a scrap. Wow, Moravia really is on a different level. The blue was fighting in full force counted as more than a scrap. I wasn't sure how I felt about her saying that. Anyway, I just returned whatever they gave me. Unlike a certain someone in the vicinity. Moravia's eyes flickered over to Yukonami, who pouted as if he was annoyed. By the way, you two have gotten pretty cozy, haven't you? I got room for one more. Absolutely. <laughs> Moravia started walking over, but Yukonami cried out. No way! I won't let you have Speezy! Eee! I squealed in surprise as Yukonami suddenly grabbed hold of me. Huh? Is he trying to hide me from Moravia's line of sight? But he wasn't handling me like a toy this time. He held me carefully like I was a precious object. But, but his grip is so strong. I can't hold out for much longer. No, I can't take it. He's squeezing too much. Y Yukonami! You're crushing me! 
Uh, sorry! Are you okay? You can help me let go of me in a hurry. His quick reaction was also different from how he acted before. I gotta be kind, right? Feels like the things I was trying to tell him have started to sink in. He was being kinder. His expression was softer, too. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Moravia looked back and forth at the two of us, one eyebrow arched in amusement. She looks pretty shocked. Giant eyes. M what? Uh, nothing. I was just thinking how much changed when I wasn't looking. You've really grown up. At any rate, I'm glad to have helped. Thank you so much. You've done so much for me, Moravia. Hmm. Do you hear something? I could hear someone approaching from far away. My body instantly stiffened. The plumes. Don't tell me they followed us. I was half panicked, but neither Yukonami nor Moravia seemed bothered by the development. Hmm, those footsteps sound like... The sound's not coming from the direction of Theta. It's coming from Tau. Oh, yeah. I looked in the direction Moravia was pointing. Sure enough, that's where the sound was coming from. I could see a dust cloud, too. Huh? Oh, it's you. What are you doing messing around out here? The new arrival was none other than Hyuga. He had a small herd of vectors behind him. You know... Hugo, when you stand like this, you're kind of hot. Like, he's kind of pretty with his hair pushed back and not wearing the hood on. I blinked. I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but I felt the tension drain from me. It's not like we're out here for the fun of it. Uh, I thought you were going off to attack Theta. Wow, he majorly misunderstood the situation. But that was something they did often, so it was no wonder Hugo made the assumption. Like, he's not my type, but he's not bad looking. You know what I mean? Couldn't find you or Yukonami anywhere, so I figured you must have gone off to Theta and rushed after you. So why are you out here just lazing around? Did you attack already? You on your way back? No, we did draw quite near to Theta, but we didn't actually go there to attack humans. Huh? Why even bother going to Theta then? Hmm. Hugo finally looked at Yukonami. When he saw his wounded state, his eyes widened in surprise. <laughs> Yukonami's over there with a stupid fucking Muppet grin on his face. Hey, Yukonami! The heck happened to you? Oh, wow, you finally noticed? Shh, thanks for paying attention, I guess. Yukonami pouted. Hyuka shook his head as if it was beside the point. Put a suck in it. You're a complete mess. Hyuka wasn't just shocked. He was clearly concerned about Yukonami's current state. I thought they were kind of cool on each other, but Hyuga seems really shaken up. Hyuga rounded on Yukonami and started interrogating him. Who? Who did this to you? Was those blasted blooms? Well, yeah, now that you mention it. But it's fine, I'm cool. No, you ain't. Damn it, how dare they? I'm gonna teach them a lesson. Then Hugo started to run. The herd of vectors followed suit. Oh, wait, you can't! As I stood in panic, Moravia reached out and grabbed Hugo's arm. Hugo. Moravia yanked Hugo to a stop. He looked furious at the interruption. Why are you stopping me? Think I'm gonna just let them get away with what they did to Yukonami? So you would prefer to abandon Yukonami in this state? Just for petty revenge? What Moravia said made sense, and Hyuga cooled off a little and as a result. That's... that's not what I meant. Let's go back to Tao for now. Yukonami needs first aid as soon as possible. Unable to deny the reality of the situation, Hyuga reluctantly nodded. Shh, fine. Hugo still looked dissatisfied, but he clearly wasn't about to dis disobey Moravia. Right now, his concern for Yukonami is overriding his desire for revenge. They must be really close after all. Hey, Yukonami, can you stand up? Lean on me. Come on, everyone's making way too much of a fuss. I'm stronger than I look, you know. Guess I could lean on you, though. Uh, just say so in the first place. Here. I waited for Hyuga and Yukonami to walk off before leaning in to speak quietly to Moravia. Hey, Moravia, listen. What's up? Thanks for that distraction earlier, but what happened with the blooms? Did you hurt them, or... I couldn't feel any ill will toward my old allies, though I knew they'd hurt Yukonami. I don't know. I ran off as soon as you got clear. I have no idea what those girls did next. At any rate, I'm sure they're pretty worried about you. I see. Well, that's okay, then. 
You're worried about the balloons? Well, they used to be my allies. Used to be. Huh. The way I said that made me depressed. But with everything that's happened, I guess there's no way I'd be allowed to remain a member of the Blooms. Everyone has reasons to regard me as an enemy now. I knew stressing out about it wouldn't do any good, but I couldn't help sighing. And let's get back to Tal. Yukonami is by far the one who suffered the most damage from that skirmish. He may be stronger than any human, but he still needs to rest. Right. We'll make sure he's treated straight away. Yukonami turned back to look at us and called out, Speezy! Moravia! Hurry up! Okay, we're coming! And so, our homecoming was quite cheerful. I was tasked with caring for Yukonami's wounds, so we headed on inside after saying goodbye to Hyuga and Moravia. We ran into Lizzie just as she was coming out of her room. Called out to her. Lizzie, I'm back! Welcome back! You found Yukonami... Lizzie stopped. Her smile frozen on her face. W what happened to Yukonami? All she knew was that I'd gone out to find Yukonami, so seeing him in such bad shape obviously gave her a shock. Well, I said if he ever avoided me when I was looking for him again, I'd show him the back of my hand. So I showed him the back of my hand, and that's what a bitch gets. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's like, did you be your boyfriend? Maybe a little. She knows what's good for him. I'm just kidding. So wrong and inappropriate. Actually, a lot happened. We ran into some of those superheroes, for starters. A lot? Oh, a lot. Huh. Truthfully, all that happened was Yukonami was the victim of a one-sided attack, but the detailed story could wait until later. I want to treat his wounds. Is it okay if we use your room? Like he doesn't have his own? Lizzie nodded. Of course. Let me help you. Are you sure? That'd be great. Can we use your room despite the fact that there's a ton of other fucking rooms so let's get his blood all over your blankets? Gross! Go to his room. Go to an empty room. You can only just sit in the chair. These wounds need to be disinfected first and foremost. Ah, uh, I think you saw some alcohol spray and other stuff in the storage room before. That might be just what we need. Wow, you're amazing, Lizzie. And there's, and there's tons of spare linens. We can cut those up for bandages and wrap them around his wounds. Oh yeah, we could, but how do you know all that? <laughs> I had spare time on my hands, so I got a good look around the building. I'll be back with everything we need. Lizzie went in search of supplies, making calculations on her fingers as she went. It's like she's not, she's like, she's gotten the antidote, so she's just alive, so it does make it. God, it's so heavy, man. Being like, oh, but the good boys were out, but then we kill her. What's disaffident? Uh, something we use to get bad, bad stuff off your body. Like germs and other stuff that gets into wounds. It'll help you heal. He said disinfectant, or whatever he said, not disinfectant. Well, I don't think I need anything like that. You do. You're injured pretty badly. Yukonami stared at me, chewing his lip. You're worried about me? I sure am. You think I can look at you in your current state and feel okay about it? Hmm. You were worried about me. Yukonami's expression softened, and he stopped complaining about the first aid. Thanks for waiting. Here's the alcohol and linens. Thanks. Let's start treating those wounds. Lizzie and I both worked to patch up Yukonami. Lizzie did most of the work, even though she had no training. She'd always been good with her hands. As Yukonami watched her work, he mumbled a question. Are you feeling better now? He was looking at Lizzie. This is the first time he's spoken to her. Lizzie looked surprised for a moment. Then she grinned with her usual spark. Hey, I'm okay. Now that my body is like this, I actually feel stronger than I was before. I see. I guess you're like one of our allies now, huh? Hearing Yukonami use the word allies made me realize how much he was growing. You know, I'm just saying, like, when I'm all in love with Ibuki, because Ibuki's more my speed, he's my favorite out of this group, right? Uh, I could absolutely see Lizzie and Hyuga, right? Because she'd be like, he'd be cooking and she'd be baking, and it's like, they're like a foodie dream team. You know what I mean? And like, they'd be just like so adorable flirting and batting eyes at each other in the kitchen. I'm just saying. Because like, to be fair, like, like Yukonami's adorable, but she's like the sassy lost child you want to adopt. I don't want to romance him, really. Like, we're romancing him and it's a little odd. And she's like, he's so childlike and innocent. It's like, yeah, just make, just if you keep bringing that up, it makes it a little more awkward. 
Like, I don't know if I like that vibe you're feeding us here. Like, mm. yeah. I mean, he's adorable and like fun character because he's like, you know, a psychopath, but then is really innocent and childlike and whatever. So like the character itself, I think is written well. And I'm, but like the romance aspect, I'm like, I just want to dial them and not do that. Let's just have him be a fun side character that like the sassy lost child we adopt. You know what I mean? That's it. I don't want to romance him. It's weird. Because she, you know what I mean? So, not my vibe. You know, obviously he wouldn't be a character I'd want to romance to begin with. Even though sometimes he does look kind of adorably pretty. You know what I mean? So you're like, okay. Like, the art's great. But, and like, Hugo also not my type. But like, fine. You know, whatever. So I would set Lizzie up with Hugo as the side, like, you know, my side character set up with one of my love interests. Usually I'm like, don't touch my love interests, Okay. But there's always the ones that you're like, eh, they got hooked up with somebody else. That's fine. I'm okay with it because they're not my favorites. But like, don't touch Ibuki. Or Tokyo. Don't touch either one of those. You know what I mean? Ayamu, you know, he's kind of pretty too. So like, maybe don't touch him either. <laughs> and I know we can't date the commander, but like, still eye on that piece. So, you know. <laughs> My efforts with Yukonami weren't wasted after all. If he carries on like this, he'll wind up on a, much, on a much better path. I was filled with fresh hope. I knew I couldn't leave Yukonami alone now, not when he was finally starting to change for the better. I don't want to see Yukonami attacking humans alongside the Vectors anymore. I think he'll listen to me if I stop him. But after everything that's happened, I can't see another. F I can see another fight breaking out if we come into contact with the Blooms again. I didn't exactly manage to explain things when I was face to face with them. I wish we could get everything out in the open. Huh. So you're good at baking? Can you bake something for me then? Sure. I'll show you some magic with the stuff you got lying around this place. While I was lost in thought, patching up Yukonami, he took the moment to break the ice with Lizzie. I was very happy to see them getting along. It seemed like a good time to voice some thoughts. I spoke up once I'd finished treating Yukonami. Hey, you two. Can I ask you something? Sure, what is it? What's up? They both turned to look at me. I have something I need to ask of you. You can have me and Lizzie listened intently. Hmm, I think I get it. So you want me to stop attacking humans, right? Right. Do you promise you won't? Even if he refused, I would keep pushing him until he agreed. Pusher. But I never needed to, because he immediately agreed to it. Sure, if that's what you want. I don't want to take humans anymore. I want you to love me. Oh, Yukonami. Finally, he and I were on the same page. My heart felt full. Tears brimmed in my eyes, and I wiped them away. Lizzie watched our exchange intently. She's like, girl, he's mentally a child. This is wrong. Tell us this, Lizzie. But you know what? Whatever. We're going to gloss over and just pretend. Yukonami, you love Spacey. Yes, I love her. Wow, not even a moment's hesitation. Love, huh? Love is the key to world peace. L Lizzie, don't make it weird. But Lizzie's romance radar was on high alert. She was grinning and I started to seriously blush. Uh, yeah, but like... Like, don't make it weird. It's already a little weird. I mean, like, okay. I, I mean... It is and it isn't. I mean... Because he's his innocent childlike wonder is because he never matured past being a temper tantrum throwing child, which makes it a little weird. Because you're like, girl, he's like mentally a child, so it's kind of wrong. But at the same time, you could also kind of go in it into it and be like, nah, he just throws temper fits and attacks people and does and does that because that's what gets him attention and. You could absolutely not have the mind of a child, but have trained, like, learned that from childhood and be doing that as a fully functioning adult. So, it's just when she constantly says, like, oh, he's like a child, and then it's like you're in love with him. It's like, you know, it, it's okay. It's not my thing. So, I'm like, eh, maybe just don't keep saying that, you know? So, just not my thing. But, like, honestly, uh, to be fair, overall, like, it's still a good route, and he's still written well and everything. It's just, eh, that's the little piece that I'd be like, if we just kind of, like, erase that and changed it a little bit, it'd be a little, like, 
probably be a little better for me personally, but eh, that's still fine. I guess what I said to Yukonami is a pretty big deal, but it's not as if I'm lying. Also, I mean, I don't, like, I guess, to me personally, I'm not sure if I buy the romance. Because, like, yeah, he's adorable, and again, he's the sassy lost child. So it's just a me thing, I think. So, like, I'm curious, like, what you feel like about his route so far. Or, like, if you played this on your own, were you like, yeah, I'm not feeling it, or no, I actually thought it was kind of cute, and, like, whatever... For, like, the main character type of a thing. Like, you know, even if it's not your... He's not your personal type. Like, you know. Like, I don't think the route's bad. I think it's written well. And I think, like, they're giving him character development, which is good. But it's just... I don't... You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, mm, he's not my type personally. Fine. Well, there's We have plenty of routes we do that. Like, Mihaya wasn't... Except for that one sprite was beautiful. But, like, most of it, I'm like, he's kind of adorable. He is the salty little bitch and I kind of like the salty grouch characters but he still kind of had baby face sometimes you know what I mean so it's like so like even though character trope wise I'm like yeah I kind of like that but you got the baby face so it kind of takes me out of it still enjoyed his route though you know what I mean this one I'm not 100% sure I buy the romance because we spend too much time I'm trying to teach you how to be a grown-up and teach you about things like love and friendship and flowers and it's like it's like you're teaching a toddler and it's, it's a little weird. Like, I mean, I'm still into it. I'm not like every time she, I'm not like, ew, ew, stop it. No. You know, I feel like we've had routes like that in games where I'm like, no. But like, we're going on this and all of a sudden we're in love and it's like, ah, okay. Anyway, we're hanging out as friends. We care about him. We're basically his mentor and his mom. So I'm not sure if I buy the romance really, but like. Like, the route's still good, but the, you know, but the romance seems questionable. Like, I don't know. I don't know. So I don't necessarily know if I buy the romance between them, you know, but could just be a fault of the fact that they don't have a lot of time for the character development, really. You know, it's not like a game where you're playing 20 hours per route. You know, it's like six hours. <laughs> like, technically less. We just talk through a lot of it. It makes it longer, but... Anyway, uh, I guess what I said to Yukonami is a pretty big deal, but it's not as if I'm lying. But it's still kind of embarrassing. It should be. I go off to try to steer the conversation back. No, telling someone you love them isn't embarrassing. In this case, you should be embarrassed. But, uh, so as I was saying, I'd like to discuss this with Moravia and Yukonami too. I don't know if they'll agree, but I feel like I need to at least try talking to them. I think she meant to say Moravia and Hyuga, but. Then let's go and see him now. It's almost dinner time anyway. Yeah, let's go see Yukonami. <laughs> Definitely meant Hugo. <laughs> I'll lead the way. Come on. Y Yukonami, you'll make your injuries worse. Please settle down. Like, this settle down. Like, you're talking to a child. It's weird. Lizzie and I chased after Yukonami as he barged out of the building, oblivious to his injuries. I mean, on one hand, he is the idiot golden retriever kind of boy, which we've had in other games where they're like, yeah, I'm like eager and I'm happy and I'm adorable and like whatever. And you're like, you're, you got two brain cells in there, maybe one, one and a half max. You know what I mean? So you're like, oh, okay. I'm like, they're like, again, a hyperactive labradoodle, you know, where you're like, okay, all right. So I think that's what makes it a little more tolerable for me. Where like, I don't really mind it because he's got that character persona. So like, I, you know, there's always the characters like, yeah, I can be serious and an adult and like have a normal conversation. But, and then I act like a hyperactive golden retriever and like, whatever, you know what I mean? And you're like, okay, we're dating a dog. Sure. You know, that's kind of like the himbos. Sure. Fine. But it's when they specifically mention, like, how childlike he is. And then he's very simple. And, like, he's got a mind of a child. And it's like, you know, don't keep saying that. Because, like, the trope that you put that into works. And as long as we take those little bits out, just, like, kind of pluck them out like thorns. Just bing, bing, bing. Just take those out and then we're fine. You know what I mean? Then it's like, he's just the hyperactive labradoodle. Like, okay. Sure. Again, not usually my favorite character trope. And, like, whatever. You know, with his adorable baby face. But it's usually, it's more acceptable than the, like, mind of a child thing. But, you know. At least they're not... Har I'm harping on it more than they are, to be fair. 
Wow, it's completely nighttime right now. Wow, there's a starry sky on the sky projection. What a loyal colony, looking so hard long after its residents are gone. I recently thought the same thing myself. Come on, come on, this way. How can you be so perky with those wounds? He recovers fast. To be honest, it's not the worst thing about being a vector. <laughs> I should know. I'm just glad you haven't lost anything that makes you Lizzie. Me too. I got the feeling Lizzie was only half joking to act tough. That was my bestie, solid as a rock. By the way, Yukonami, where are we going? We'll arrive soon. The others will be there around this time. Yukonami was right. After walking for a while, we came across a campfire. Hugo was there, preparing dinner. Do you always prep dinner out here? We eat out here, too. Moravia likes to eat under the sky, so this is where Hugo cooks. Huh, I see. I wondered where the food was coming from. Guess that mystery solved now. Well, we knew it was coming from Hugo. We just didn't know where he was cooking. It's super hard to cook well over a campfire. It's amazing he can make such great food like that. See, Lizzie's already getting the things for... I'm okay with this, girl. I know I have to date him next, but, like, I'm just saying. Moravia stood by Hugo, excitedly waiting for the meal to be ready. Hmm, maybe I'm projecting. It's hard to tell whether she's actually excited or not, but in any case, this is a nice, peaceful scene. We appreciate... Oh, we approach the campfire... Good evening. Can we eat with you tonight? Like, like, see, when Hugo's kind of like this, he's not bad looking. Like, like, he ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? He's not probably going to be my favorite, but, like, he's not bad to look at, so I'm not mad about it. But, of course. Hugo's face was as stony as ever, but he didn't raise any objections. <laughs> Actually, this one's kind of funny when he's like, just looking off to the side, but his mouth looks really pouty, like, mmm. <laughs> it's just ridiculous looking. I kind of like it. I made some basic introductions since this was Lizzie's first time meeting them. She started to get along with everyone in no time at all. Moravia, you look like you're pretty excited for dinner. Excited? Me. Yeah, you are. For sure. My impression of Moravia was starting to change a bit. Yuganami, how are your wounds? Totally on the mend. Spacey and Lizzie patched me up real good. Yuga's stiff face softened into a smile when he saw Yukonami's energy. <laughs> Look at his giant smiles, Goofy. I see. Yuga, you were super worried about me, right? Huh? You were, weren't you? Whatever you say. Anyway, dinner's ready. Yeah, when he's pouty like this and pushing his hair back or like whatever, some of his sprites are nice. The other ones are like not my favorite, but he's got a couple nice ones. Yuga looked away, ignoring Yukonami's teasing. But from the way he came running over when we met, we met outside earlier, it was obvious he'd been worried. You know, like, this, like, Yukonami sprite is kind of cute. Because it's like, he doesn't, he has slight baby face, but it's like a prettier one than, like, big, goofy, giant saucer eyes kind of one. Let's eat. And Moravia's casual prompt, we all dug into the meal. Yukonami, Hugo, Moravia, Lizzie, and me. All five of us sat on chairs, enjoying ourselves. I never thought I'd see the day where all of us sat down to enjoy a meal together. Lizzie's natural friendliness soon made everyone warm up to her. The atmosphere was comfortable. It was almost as if we were old friends who'd known each other a long time. Once we were done eating, I talked to Hugo and Moravia about the topic I broached with Yukonami and Lizzie earlier. Hey, Moravia, remember how you once said that I don't know anything? Well, I've learned a lot since then, and I've been doing some hard thinking, too. Moravia gazed at me. Her warm expression encouraged me to continue, and I found out a lot about Yukonami. I was a bit scared of him at first, but the more I got to know him, I realized his heart is pure. So I'm hoping Yukonami won't attack humans anymore. The Yukonami I got to know since coming here isn't like a vector who attacks humans mindlessly. He has the heart of a pure human. Yukonami and Lizzie looked thoughtful, but kept quiet. Hyuga scowled, but he didn't protest. Not like a vector, eh? That's an interesting conclusion to draw. Yeah, I'm not the clueless girl I once was. You're still completely in the dark. You won't be able to save anyone at this rate. Since coming here, I've really realized how, how I've drifted through life without knowing much. I found out so many things I never knew. About vectors, and about Yukonami. Moravian nodded silently. 
At first, I was only interested in saving Lizzie. But after finding out so much since coming here, I realized that I want to save Yukonami too. Like, fuck the rest of you guys, though. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, I'm grateful to you, Marav I'm grateful to you, Moravia, for bringing me here. I said my piece. Now I had to wait and see how Moravia would take it. After a short silence, Moravia cleared her throat. You help the people around you, regardless of whether they're humans or vectors. I respect that. So if you say you want to help Yukonami, then I'm happy to assist. Thank you! Moravia knew where I was coming from. My body flooded with relief. Uh, but are you two going to keep attacking humans even if Yukonami gives it up? Moravia cocked her head and thought for a few moments. Hmm. I'll make a call on that once I see how Yukonami gets on. What say you, Hyuga? Moravia turned to Hyuga, who was still scowling at me. A lot of nice words and fancy talk. Maybe. Oh, I'm assuming that's what he's supposed to have said, but it didn't have a lot of nice words and fancy talk. I, it didn't have, like, a name on top of it. It was just a random quote, but maybe. Maybe it seems that way, but I honestly think it's the right thing to do, and I won't give up on what I feel is right. I stared back at him with determination. Hugo looked away, then turned to Yukonami. Yukonami, this is good with you? Yeah, I think it's what she's saying sounds good. So I won't attack humans anymore. Anyway, spending time with her is so much more fun than bugging humans. I see. Hugo looked dissatisfied, and he didn't commit to stopping his attacks on the humans. But I had a feeling that he'd follow Moravia's lead. That's what he tended to do, anyway. Unsurprisingly, Moravia didn't commit to an answer. I wasn't quite sure what was on her mind, but at the same time, I sort of understood. Moravia and Hugo will decide for themselves based on what I do next. To, for to forge a better future, I couldn't look back. No matter what path you two choose, I've made up my own mind. So I'm thinking of going to see the Blooms. I want to let them know that Yukonami will no longer go after humans. Will they believe a word of that? That lot's deaf to reason. I have to tell them whether they believe it or not. I can't move forward otherwise. Besides, I learned to understand Yukonami. It's a mistake and a shame to assume people can't be reasoned with. A shame, huh? Hugo looked exasperated. He turned to Moravio, who locked eyes with him. He didn't say anything after that. I'm sure it'll go well. I have to believe. Report obtained. A few days had passed since I let Moravia and Hyuga know how I felt. Yukonami, Moravia, and I headed off to Theta once again. I want to infiltrate Theta and talk to the Blooms, but it won't be easy. Are you getting nervous? Well, it's just that Theta's protected by layers of reinforced walls. Getting in's going to be harder than getting out. We always just bar uh, busted our way through without any major issue, though. Wow. Oh, yeah. Come to think of it, how did you guys always manage to get in? Through the gap. G gap? How did we get out? We jumped over a wall, remember? My question came out as a squeak. I couldn't even imagine a gap in Theta's defenses. Your walls are pretty thick, but they're not impregnable. Human error is alive and well. Everything you people make has at least one flaw. Anyway, you don't need to worry yourself about getting into Theta this time around. We don't even have to sneak in at all. We don't? Why does she know that I don't? I hope it's nothing too crazy, Rio. Apparently my concern was showing, because Moravia smiled at me reassuringly. And don't sweat it. Leave everything to me. Really? Everything? You heard, Moravia. Just let her take care of it. You know, I know this is a while ago, but you just go along with whatever Moravia says, don't you, Yukonami? Of course I do. Moravia's amazing, after all. It's not really a great reason... Since they grew up together in that lab, I guess they have a bond I can't fully comprehend. Since we're here, why not enjoy the scenery? We're having lovely weather today. Same ruined landscape under the same dead sky. Pretty much the same as it ever was. Maybe it was a matter of perspective, but I elected to take Moravia's advice and not stress over the small details of the plan. We are a few minutes under time, by like five minutes under time, but I am going to stop here. So 
I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thank you.